Hello everybody, I'm back. It's been three weeks. I think it's been slightly more than three weeks since I've last uploaded a YouTube video. Basically, things have been just crazy, crazy busy. YouTube is still obviously a secondary thing um, in my life. The job and career and all of that has to come first. Obviously, sometimes YouTube is closely intertwined with career, but just in terms of what's been going on, this is just gonna bring you up to speed with everything that's been going on where I am, where I'm going to, and just a general catch up. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ollie, I'm a junior doctor living and working in the northeast of England. So what have I been doing? Well, the long and short of it is that my F1 year, my first year of practice as a junior doctor since leaving medical school is coming to a close. So I have done three jobs this year. You do three four month rotations. My first one was in hepatobiliary and transplant surgery. My second placement was an academic job where I was spending most of my time doing academic research and teaching medical students while doing general medicine on call. So I was still doing weekends and out of hours work. And then this final job of FY1 has been in acute medicine, what we sometimes call front of house medicine. That is patients who are coming through the front door. We still don't know 100% what's going on with them or what the best treatment for them is going to be. So we acutely see them and sort them out. And the way that this rotation works at my hospital is I spent the first two months of this block. So between April and the beginning of June, I spent working on what's called the assessment suite here. Other places you might call it something like a medical admissions unit or a medical decisions unit or clinical decisions unit, whatever you like. So it's not as acute as A&E, which is when people who are really unwell or sick or injured come in through the front door. It's kind of the step after that. So they come into A&E, get seen by one of the team there, decide roughly how sick they are, do they need to be admitted to hospital, can they go home, do they need emergency surgery, whatever. So by the time the patient gets to me on the assessment suite, we might have chest pain and a cough, query, pneumonia. So that might be the information that you have. And then you need to, again, full history, full examination, further investigations, x-rays, CTs, whatever you want, and whether they need admitting to a ward long term or they can go home. And like I say, really begin your decision making process and justifying the investigations that you want, because especially if people come in in the middle of the night and there was a lot of out of hours work, lots of nights and weekends working on the assessment suite, and there isn't always time for someone more senior to come and see them immediately or that person might be busy. You know, you don't have consultant support overnight. There is a post eight ward round in the morning. So overnight, if you were doing the night, you would clerk, you know, four, five, six, seven patients, whatever, make a diagnosis, make a plan, begin treatment. And then in the morning, they would be reviewed by a consultant and ultimately a plan made. What I'm doing now and will be doing until the beginning of August, so I've got another month and a half on my new job, is I am working as a clinical pharmacology and toxicology doctor. So I'm now working on a medical ward um, instead of front of house. So I'm just kind of a general medicine doctor, uh, specifically working in the, the directorate of clinical pharmacology and toxicology. And as the name might suggest, that's things like drug overdoses, poisonings. Obviously, these things are quite rare, these kind of actual toxicological events. So we're actually very much just a general medicine ward at the moment where if there's not a bed for anyone anywhere else in the hospital, they come to us and we sort out their medical management. Actual tox problems very few and far between but the pace so far has been really nice the team that we're working with are lovely really willing to teach very supportive um, but very enabling as well we do our own ward rounds as the junior doctors with a consultant ward round once or twice a week but the thing is is that the patients are a well enough and b kind of not complex enough that we're able to do a very functional ward round, even as an FY1 doctor. And all is generally well. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's a great place to work. But the big next exciting step is that I said that I'm coming to the end of FY1, my first year of practice as a doctor. And one of the things that you have to do in order to progress to the next year of training, to foundation year two, or the final year of the foundation program, 
is you have to pass what's called your ARCP. I think it's Annual Review of Competency and Progression or something like that. And the way this works is that throughout the entire year of FY1, you have to build up a portfolio showing that you are building evidence and working towards meeting a curriculum. You get given this curriculum that you have to meet, which includes things like being a capable doctor, being a good member of the team, contributing to quality improvement, teaching, leadership, all of these different domains. And you have to log learning events as you go through. So these might be case-based discussions that you would do with a senior doctor. These might be procedures if you've done things like arterial blood gases or you might have done a chest strain or a lumbar puncture. These things where learning has taken place or extracurricular achievements, you can map all of these things to the portfolio and to the curriculum. At the end of the year, a panel of doctors looks at everything that you've done, checks that it meets the standards required of the curriculum and of you. If you've not done things like getting feedback from an appropriate number of people, or you've not evidenced a particular part of the curriculum, you wouldn't be able to progress. And you might have to have FY1 extended for a period of months for you to make that time up to give you extra time to meet those competencies. Now there is a bit of a grace period. We've just had the outcomes in this past week. So given that we're not at the end of FY1 yet, there's still a few weeks if you had anything that could be reasonably done within that time period you've got a bit of time to make things up and fix things. But thankfully all is well, I got my outcome one, which is recommendation for progression into FY2, satisfactory completion of F1. And the panel comments of the doctors reviewing my portfolio were all really, really positive. Definitely some videos to come on the foundation doctor portfolio, because I think, especially if you have less clinical time, if you're an academic trainee like me, who has less rotations in which to build the same competencies, going in with a strategy of how you're gonna tackle things is really important. The only other major thing that's happened is this ALS, Advanced Life Support, one of the Resus Council courses for healthcare professionals in the UK. And what ALS is all about is ultimately leading a cardiac arrest team. So not only assessing someone, spotting that they are in cardiac arrest, immediate management such as compressions, taking over the airway, such and such, and then tackling the reversible causes, your 4Hs and Ts, essentially trying to keep them going until someone more senior can arrive and provide help, or continuing to provide help and try and manage them if nobody arrives. It was a really, really good day. Resus Council courses are always fantastic, ridiculously high quality. We did the EALS version, so it was funded for all of the Foundation Year One doctors in my trust. So it was about eight, so it was about eight hours of e-learning and a written exam that you did before, and then a written exam and a practical assessment on the day and a full day of tutorials and practical sessions. It was really, really good. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. More videos to come. I've waffled on long enough. Take care, and I will see you in another video. Bye-bye for now.